Our fifth panelist comes from the Finnish parliament. Actually, Kai Mykkönen will show that I was wrong when I told that there's not enough uh, knowledge of Russia in our parliament. <laughs> um, Kai Mykkönen is a member of parliament uh, since uh, 2015. And uh, he comes to the parliamentary group of the National Coalition Party. Uh, before that, um, he used to work uh, as an economist and acting director in the East Office of Finland, uh, Finnish industry, industries from uh, 2009 to 2011, and also director of the Confederation of Finnish Industries, ECO, as we say in Finnish, uh, in charge of Russia. <clears throat> from uh, 2013 to 2015. And Kai Mykkänen is also a graduate from the master's program in Russian and East European Studies uh, coordinated by the Alexander Institute. Kai, you have the floor. So, Madam President, Honoured Chancellor and Rector, dear alumni, sisters and brothers from the Master's Program of Alexander Institute and dear, dear uh, participants, uh, I was asked to speak about the economy and I want to use a bit provoking and straight words from certain phenomenon that I believe that are happening in Russia and uh, I must also Stress that though my assistant seems to have used uh, slide, slides with a Focomus brand, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, uh, uh, this presentation does not necessarily represent the official opinion of, of uh, National Coalition Party, especially once there that doesn't exist, but merely my personal understanding on, on what is actually happening in Russia and what will happen in the near future based on my experience as a corporate banker worked in Russia last decade and then as a Russia economist in previous posts and also from my experience about my political life where I had actually my first anniversary date as being one year at the parliament and also the vice chairman of, of the Russia Cooperation Group of Finnish parliament. And uh, maybe my main message Russia's golden years economically are gone. I don't mean that there would be an inevitable catastrophe or something like that, but I mean that actually we won't see such a growth in purchase power and economical power of Russia that we used to uh, last during last decade within at least uh, next de two, two, one or two decades. And uh, I usually divide Russian near history in three parts. First, 1990s, for vast majority of Russians, it was a chaos and robbery, and totally disruption of everything, stability, and so on. If you ask a Russian person in Moscow if she or he still remembers something about 1990s, it's usually negative, always negative. Then the next decade, the golden decade, last decade before the financial crisis, it really was a golden decade for most of Russians, not only for oligarchs or, or Putin's regime. It's quite rare in the world history that unemployment and poverty halved, real wages tripled, life satisfaction really grew significantly. But it was of course based on one-off factors, mostly on the fact that actually the nominal oil price grew uh, tenfold, uh, well, fivefold from 2000 until 2008, and that went directly to the pockets of, of, of Russia. But it didn't solve the basic problems. And uh, to cut it short, I think that the most severe problem is actually here. Russia should somehow jump from a raw material country into a knowledge-based economy, a knowledge-based superpower if it wants to lead uh, somehow or if it wants to stably 
increase the uh, life standards of, of its nation. And actually here we see that 15, 20 years ago, Russia, uh, in, in Russia they, they published more patent applications than in China, but now, as you see, China has run far away from Russia. And also the United States, as a more developed country, still has grown much faster in its knowledge-based economy than Russia. And it would be very hard to see that how Russia might catch up in this sense. Has it high oil or low oil, oil price or whatever? And uh, many people think that problems in Russian economy are a result of sanctions or tensions over the battle of Ukraine or something like that. But actually, as you see from this picture, the problems, actually the recession in Russia began a year, a year before the crisis in Ukraine happened. And I think that it's not purely a uh, coincidence. Because something what we don't know, as there was a question that what is unknown about Russia is that how current regime will survive or how it will react in a situation where its legitimacy and its support can't come from the very high growth of purchase power of, of uh, Russian citizens. And um, maybe one answer we, we saw here, and uh, on my opinion, this taking over of Crimea was actually not such a strategic step. It can be explained as a logical reaction to what happened, a revolution happened in Kiev and uh, also in security-wise situation about the Black Sea stability, but what at least was, in my opinion, a strategic choice, and it actually took a month or so before Russia got involved in the battle of, of eastern Ukraine, and it could have cho chosen differently. And here I'm afraid that it <coughs> won't change quite, uh, quite fast, but it will mean that Russia is shifting further away from Western values and geopolitics is now over economics, and it will be uh, so for at least a decade or, or so. And actually, if this was a reaction to the situation that one's legitimacy can't come anymore from the economy, it has actually worked pretty nicely. So as you can see, current regime has a risk of falling legitimacy clearly before the crisis in Ukraine. After the financial crisis, the tendency was uh, quite risky for Putin's regime. But then, right after the Crimea was taken over, there was a very rapid rise in the ac perception or, or, or acceptance of Putin's regime, and also very fast rise in the answers of, is the country going on to the right direction or to the wrong direction? So it has worked at least so far. Uh, Actually, right currently, the Russian economy seems to be to somewhat recovering, and the falling down is, is calming, and also the price of the oil has stabilized. But unfortunately, if there is not a fast jump or, or a big jump in oil price to somewhere 50 to 80 dollars per barrel, so if the oil price stays below 40, let's say within two years, we will see a problem because these uh, reserve funds will run out of money. And then we will have a situation where actually one has to cut uh, he severely uh, pensions or, or state, state salaries, or one has to start, for example, printing money. And uh, unfortunately, if I would have to guess, I would, I would think that the easiest choice in the end is to print money because then one doesn't make a noticeable choice of, of uh, making problems for pensioners, but it actually happens through high inflation. But for the Russian economy, it might not be the easiest way to, to go on. And of course, once Russia will have problems in its public economy, I am afraid that actually the need for victories in foreign politics increase, increases. And it will be interesting to see what happens with Belarus, Kazakhstan, other places where there might be new tensions between Russia and Europe, Russia and China, and so on. Well, just one word about the economic meaning of Russia toward Finland. Actually, we have lost about one 
percent of Finnish GDP because of the falling exports from Finland to Russia. It's significant. Actually, our economy could have been on plus side uh, a year, or actually in, in, in 2014 and 2015, if Russian economy wouldn't have collapsed. It's not because of sanctions. It's 80% it's from other reasons, from, from uh, the falling oil prices, but it's, it's meaningful. But on the other hand, we must see that actually for Finland, this scale is, is, gives the percentage of, of a certain country, a meaning of certain country for Finnish economy. It's quite small nowadays. Much more important what happens for uh, the Western economies, also what happens for China. It's must, much more important for Finnish uh, value-added exports than, than what happens in Russia. Of course, it's important for certain fields of the economy, but not that important that we many times think. Um, so, thank you for this, and I hope that we will have a small discussion. I must say that, that this panel may be a bit a Russian panel, maybe actually no time for discussion. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kai. Actually, as to 1990s, um, you mentioned that it, it was a very, very bad time for us, for Russia and Russians, and uh, that's true. But uh, one thing was very good. People remember that time because it, it was um, almost total freedom of word during that time, and and it, it was very creative time time for Russian artists and, and, and writers and, and very very new things happened happened in those years in, in Russia. 